To put itself in position to deliver on its promise to land on the moon next year, SpaceX has had to completely reinvent the way it ensures that rockets won't blow up on the launch pad when they lift off and explode in the sky. So this is SpaceX's new trick to face the 33 engine ignition. Well, SpaceX is supposed to learn from failure to succeed, so now we should take a look back at their valuable lessons during last month's Starship flight. First, the no clamp slow throttle up meant Starship stayed on the pad for a long time, throwing up concrete, rock, and sand in all directions, damaging the pad, nearby facilities, and the Starship itself. Remember those clamps? On a rocket like the Saturn V, they'd actually hold the rocket in place for a couple of seconds while the rocket came fully up to power. Then the clamps let go. SpaceX did it another way. They opened the clamps before the countdown even began. Then they slowly throttled up the rocket on the pad. That's why it took Starship, with twice the power of a Saturn V, almost twice as long to clear the tower. It just sat there for a lot longer, blasting away at the ground. That was all part of the plan, but it was also part of what doomed the flight. By the time it left the pad, that debris had already destroyed three of Starship's engines and likely damaged valves and systems that would lead to additional engine failures as well as an incorrect fuel mixture. Starship was slow to reach every point in the flight plan, suggesting that other engines weren't able to throttle up to compensate for the lost engines. At what should have been stage separation, either software errors or more smashed hardware kept the main booster firing long after it should have shut down. The result was an uncontrolled spin that required Starship to be destroyed. Based on these failures, SpaceX has immediately come up with two main solutions for the future of Starship. The first mitigation will be a change to the final seconds of the countdown. During the maiden launch, Starship fired up its engines over a 5-6 to six second period. Musk added that during Booster 9's launch, this will be reduced by around 50% to around 2.5 seconds before the vehicle lifts off. For the next flight, we certainly will be taking off faster. So this, for this flight, we were we erred on the side of uh, kind of babying the engines and just sort of gently sort of starting each engine one at a time. However, the key solution will be a water jacketed sandwich or what we call the deluge system. In fact, SpaceX shipped Starship deluge hardware from Florida to Starbase in January. But SpaceX then decided to let the flight go before this was completed. Honestly, almost all rockets use some sort of deluge system to prevent their own exhaust from damaging or destroying themselves or their surroundings. A large volume of water is sprayed into the space just below the rocket's engines and can prevent an immense acoustic energy or sound they produce from wreaking havoc. A deluge also helps protect launch pad hardware by allowing some of the energy in the exhaust to boil and vaporize water instead of eating it into concrete or steel. But CEO Elon Musk has infamously stated that SpaceX is intentionally attempting to build an orbital launch site that doesn't need a flame diverter for Starship, the most powerful rocket in history. That's gone about as well as one might expect until last month. So what is needed will have to happen. At this point, SpaceX has started making some progress on the transpirational steel plate system that will be installed under the Starship OLM. And based on the images taken at the scene, Ryan Hansen has surpassed himself here. This answers so many questions the community has been asking about. The supply pipes and manifolds have been measured and accurately modeled. Basically, you've got a water-filled plenum with plenty of holes, pressurized high enough that water will be flowing out the holes even under the pressure of the exhaust. So from one direction, you've got a flow of water. In the other, you've got a flow of super hot exhaust. There will be an established temperature gradient between the two. Everywhere except at the center, there will be a radial flow of steam blowing the exhaust away from the plate, and in the center, the water pressure is higher than the exhaust pressure. The exhaust never touches the plate, it's only exposed, worst case, to steam. All SpaceX has to do is maintain the water flow high enough that the temperature at the steel plate never exceeds 1000 degrees Celsius, and that the water doesn't boil until it's outside the plenum, and the plate's good to go. Honestly, in the real world, that plate never sees more than a couple hundred degrees Celsius. It doesn't matter to the plate how hot the water gets after it's no longer in contact with the plate after all. And remember, SpaceX routinely keeps combustion chamber walls directly exposed to much higher temperatures and pressures from melting. They are very experienced at heat flow analysis. If there's any concern here, it's not that the plate will be damaged by the exhaust, it's that you're going to get a lot of turbulence and unstable behavior that might reflect back at the engines. And that's going to be a pretty impressive wall of steam leaving the launch platform. Not as chunky as flying concrete, but potentially quite damaging anyway. 
In short, like any SpaceX design, it may need improvement in the details to get to the concept. This approach lets them eventually build a stage zero launch machine that can readily be reproduced. This is absolutely essential as SpaceX is parlaying its role in NASA's Artemis moon landing, not to mention the money, to create hardware and services to be sold to other customers. Note SpaceX recently has a competitor's back as NASA recently selected Blue Origin as the second Artemis lunar lander provider. While SpaceX plans to use Starship, a gargantuan rocket and spacecraft system designed to function on its own, Blue Origin had a more straightforward plan to develop a lunar lander, similar to those used for the Apollo missions. Blue Origin's lunar lander would ride as a payload on a separate rocket while SpaceX's Starship is in its own self-contained system. Functionally, however, Blue Moon would take on the same role as the spacecraft portion of SpaceX's Starship. For Artemis 3, Starship would launch to the moon empty. It would rendezvous with NASA's Orion crew capsule, which aims to carry astronauts to lunar orbit. After the astronauts transfer of vehicles, Starship would then handle the work of touching down on the moon's surface, allowing astronauts to explore, and then returning them to Orion in lunar orbit. For Artemis 4, Starship would also dock with Gateway, a planned space station intended to orbit around the moon. But companies will be required to complete Pathfinder missions or test flights before they can conduct such landings. Next, the company plans on using the enormous rocket to open up opportunities in deep space and closer to home. With a fully reusable Starship, satellites can be captured and repaired in orbit, returned to Earth, or transferred to a new operational orbit, SpaceX says in its Starship User's Guide. Visual Visualizations of this show Starship's bullet-shaping fairing opening like the mouth of a largemouth bass to capture or discharge payloads in orbits. As for commercial customers, two billionaires are waiting for Starship besides Musk. The rocket's most reliable customer, however, may be SpaceX itself. By using Starship's expansive cargo bay, the company says it could deliver 400 Starlink Internet satellites per launch, as opposed to the 60 that can be carried by a Falcon 9 rocket. Musk started SpaceX with the goal of launching enough people and supplies to colonize Mars, a task that will take hundreds if not thousands of Starship flights. Despite the destruction end of the first test, this distant dream has edged closer to reality. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.